Hello and welcome back to another installment of the elopement series I'm doing here on my YouTube channel. If you clicked on this video, then that means either A, you probably recently got engaged, so congratulations, or B, you're my mom or dad or a really close friend and you feel compelled to watch my videos. Either way, thank you so much for being here and I hope you enjoy. In my first elopement video, I shared with you eight reasons why I think you should consider eloping. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it up above as well as down below in the description box and you can go check that one out. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a bride's guide to planning the perfect elopement. Because I know when I started planning our elopement, I had a lot of questions. So buckle up, buttercup. You're in for a wild ride. I mentioned in the first video that planning an elopement is so much simpler than planning a wedding. And it is. But there are still things that are confusing and that you just don't know about, you know, all the legalities. But hopefully after today's video, you feel a little bit better about those things and a bit more knowledgeable about the whole elopement process and you'll be ready to run off and tie the knot. So the first thing you need to consider when you're planning your elopement is where. Are you going to get married in the state you reside in? Are you going to get married in another state? Or are you going to get married in another country? If you get married in another country, there are strict laws and regulations that you have to follow, and they differ from country to country. For example, if you get married in Spain, either you or your partner have to have been a citizen of Spain for at least two years prior to the marriage. That's just not doable for some people, you know? So usually when you're getting married abroad, people suggest going to your local courthouse, signing the papers that say you're married, and then having a ceremony abroad. That way you're not having to deal with all the legal stuff in another country. So please do your research if you are planning on getting married abroad and really look into the laws of that country. Now, laws also differ a lot from state to state. In the US, there are certain states where you need an officiant and at least one witness to get married. And then there are states where you can sell solemnize. Solemnize, solemnize. How do you say that? Let me look it up. What did we ever do before Google? Solemn. Solemnize. So solemnizing is when you and your partner marry yourselves. You don't need an officiant, you don't need a witness, just you and your partner sign the paper and you're married. There are eight states in the United States where it's legal to self-solemnize. And those states are California, Colorado, Illinois, Maine, Nevada, Wisconsin, Kansas, and Pennsylvania. In those states, you don't have to self-solemnize. You can still have a wedding with an officiant and have your witnesses sign your marriage license, but you do have the option if you want to, to self-solemnize. So once you've decided whether or not you're self-solemnizing, then you can figure out how to actually get the marriage certificate in the county you're getting married in. Now, don't go get the marriage license like three months before your wedding. In some states that's okay, but in some states it's not. For example, in California, once you get your marriage license, it's effective for 90 days. After the 90 days is up, you have to reapply. In Colorado, your marriage license is only effective for 35 days before you have to reapply. So you need to look at the laws and regulations for the state and county you are getting married in. To do that, you can go to the county clerk's website in the county that you're getting married in. Okay, now that we've got all the legal mumbo jumbo out of the way, let's move on to the fun stuff. So you need to think, what am I gonna wear? Do you want a dress? Do you want your dress to be white? Do you want it to be black? Do you want to wear jeans? I mean, you can wear jeans if you want. You can wear whatever you want. I personally wanted a dress. And so I made an appointment at a bridal boutique and I went in and did, you know, the whole shebang. I had a Pinterest board. I showed my dress lady all the dresses I liked and she was pulling them off the rack left and right. Anyway, I, I had the whole say yes to the dress moment is what I'm getting at. And it was so much fun. I'd like to go try on wedding dresses again just for kicks and giggles. Anyway, so do you want a dress? And if so, book that appointment. Go try on dresses. It's fun. So after I got my dress, the next thing that freaked me out was how am I gonna get this to California? I have a wedding dress that I need to fly in a plane across the United States without it getting wrinkled. How am I gonna do that? So, you know, I was Googling all these things, like, how to transport wedding dress on an airplane. 
They're all like, throw it in your carry-on, it'll be fine. And it really was fine, that's what I did. We bought some hard-shelled luggage and we had two carry-ons and then like a big suitcase that Justin and I shared. I'll link the luggage down below by the way. It, love it, phenomenal luggage. One of the carry-ons had my dress and his tux and then the other carry-on had like, you know, an extra set of clothes, toiletries, stuff like that. And so then we had two identical carry-ons and I was so anal that I tied a piece of white string around the one that had my wedding dress in it and I carried it around the whole time. I was like, I'm not letting this thing out of my sight. I'm not even letting Justin carry it. It's not being pried from my hands. I also took a little steamer with me that I could steam the wrinkles out once we got to the hotel. But honestly, my dress really didn't even wrinkle. We just like rolled it up instead of folding it and yeah, it traveled really well. That's what I suggest for transporting your dress. It was something that stressed me out. So if it's something that's stressing you out, no stress, girlfriend. Elopements are supposed to be stress-free, okay? The next thing I thought about when planning my elopement was how the heck am I gonna do my hair and how the heck am I gonna do my makeup? I am not a hair and makeup guru and I was Googling it and watching YouTube videos and a lot of brides said that they either went to like Ulta or some people like went to Sephora and just got their makeup done that day. And I was not that trusting of people. I was much too controlling, I guess, over how I wanted my hair and makeup to look. So I just did it myself. I did two or three different hair trials, I think. And then the same with my makeup. I did a couple trials on that. And I really liked how it turned out. If you want to see an elopement hair and makeup tutorial, let me know, guys. <laughs> It was an option through Simply Eloped to book a hair and makeup lady for an extra cost, but I never met her. I'd never seen her work. I didn't know what it would look like on me. So I just wasn't that trusting to put my whole wedding day, elopement day, look in someone else's hands. So I just did it myself. The next thing you need to think about is do you want a photographer and do you want a videographer? More than likely your friends and family aren't going to be there and that is one way that you can share your day with them. I know that wedding and elopement photographers can be so pricey. Trust me, I know I looked through a bunch of them, which is why I was overjoyed when I found Simply Eloped and realized that I could have like the whole thing efficient location photographer for less than the price of these other photographers that I was finding. Like I was baffled. If you guys have any questions for me, please comment them down below. And while you're down there, you should subscribe. I really appreciate it, like for real. All right, I've babbled enough for a day. I'll see you in the next one.